Hello and welcome back to the Peculiar Place podcast. This is the segment Two Bees in a Pod, and we're your hostesses. I'm Mandy and I'm Jesse. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm I'm repping Canada today, big Tim, big time. Tim Hortons. We were just talking about how, and you're only gonna get this if you're from Canada, probably. We've always had roll up the rim, which is basically you buy a drink and then you roll it up and see if you get a prize. Sometimes it's Timbits. Sometimes it's another coffee. Sometimes it's a car. Yep. Roll up the rim to win. Yeah, everyone was always so excited for that. But now they don't have it anymore because people were like faking, I guess, prizes and stuff. So now it's all through an app and it's not as fun. So. No. So Tim Hortons, bring back the OG roll up the rim to win. Get it together. Get it together. All right. So today we're doing our usual trending topics. And then we are talking about some toxic movie sets. There's a lot out there. I only oh, yeah. have, I think, six or seven this time. But there are so many. Six or seven's a lot. <laughs> is it? <laughs> because immediately what I think of immediately is The Shining. Yeah. And I think of The Wizard of Oz. And that's okay. It. I have those two Those on are here. like the famous ones. So I don't know any other toxic movie sets. Well, when I was doing research, I found, like, uh, articles that was, like, top 60 most toxic sets. It's a tongue wow. twister. So there are a lot. So I just chose, like, the most, uh, I guess, crazy ones. Okay. So we'll get into that soon. First, I want to say I went to the premiere of Love Lies Bleeding. How was it? It was really interesting. So, okay, okay overall, it was good. It gave me a very... Um, Saltburn vibe. Really? I was, yeah, I was told before the movie it was going to be very saltburn. It was going to be shocking. Like they did sort of trials of the movie before it came out where they wanted to see audiences' reaction. I think this was back in January. And they were saying people were throwing up. No. Watching it. And so I was nervous because I'm not good with like gore and stuff. And I knew it was a crime thriller. So I knew it was going to be gory in some way. But it was interesting. It's about a bodybuilder. It's like a... Um, flash dance. Flash dance. What's that? Yeah, it's giving me flash dance vibes. What's flash dance? You ever heard of flash no. dance where the girl is like sweaty and she's like dancing in the rain and like... I don't know, the one chick reminds me of Flash. Okay, she's I think like I see a, an image in my head. I didn't know she was a bodybuilder. I don't know if she was a bodybuilder okay. either, but she was like really fit. <laughs> Like, super fit. Okay, so this was, like, a, a lesbian romance thriller, crime thriller. So, like, Kristen Stewart's family is into these, like, really uh, gritty crimes that they do. And it's pretty bad. And then she meets this beautiful bodybuilder. And they get together. And their worlds kind of collide and not in a very good way. It's interesting. It's gory. It's definitely gory. I love being in a theater when people, like, all collectively gasp. Is there, like, a twist? Um, Can you tell me what the twist is? No. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to watch it. Is it, like, worth the watch? Yeah, I think so. I think it's worth the watch. Can you it, just tell me what happens? No. It's interesting because there's, like, <laughs> this element of surrealism with bodybuilding. It does I, not okay, sound like I'll tell you. Watch. So at the very end. <laughs> Wait. What? It's, like, artsy. Okay. How do you feel about Kristen Stewart's performance? I thought it was really good. Do you think that she's, like, really grown as an actress? I really do, yeah. I think she's found her thing, and she's taking roles that are actually kind of like her. So... Oh, you mean, like... I mean, she's dating a girl in real life, and I feel like this is just... It's her element. Like the Okay, whole... no, so that's not what I was referring to. Okay. She suits those roles. Like, take it back to, like, the runaways. You know what I mean? Like, she suits those roles because... That's, like, more her personality type. She does a good job. Yeah, the grungy, rebellious. That, and then also, like, before that, you know, with Twilight and, like, everything. Uh, what is it? Adventure? Adventure time? No. <laughs> Adventureland? What, Adventureland? What is, is that what it is? She was, like, that, like, kind of quirky, nervous, shy, twitchy. Yeah. You know, she's, like... <laughs> well, that's, you know I mean? that's Kristen Stewart for you, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I found that she always sort of, like did that but in this movie she's not the shy she's still quirky but she's very confident and i think she plays that role well now that she's kind of come into herself Well, because i also watched her in like the princess diana role so what i'm trying to say is do you think that she's able to do more yes diana i was really shocked to see her in a role like that yeah, i forgot she played diana that is like outside of her like yeah. Normal, sort of, I guess, the roles that she always sort of plays. Do you know what I mean? She's typecasted a lot. I love to see her do more 
different stuff. Love that for her. Anyways, overall, it was a good experience. It was gruesome, though. I covered my eyes many times for the gore. For the gore. Well, it definitely looks action-packed. It is. Which is not really my thing. But it has a good cast. Here's the next thing about a movie. Mary Poppins is increasing its age rating. So, <laughs> like, like old school Mary Poppins? Like, yeah. Like we're talking about the original? Yeah. So, it's always had a U rating, which means it contains no material likely to offend or harm. Uh -oh. Kind of like a G rating, you know, general, good for everybody. It now has to be moved up to a PG, scandalous, but it has to be moved up, which is crazy because most Disney movies are G, especially Mary Poppins. Like, So, why? So, it's due to racial slurs. Oh, uh, I would have guess that so there's a scene where the chimney sweepers have their faces covered in soot and they are called a name that is now considered offensive i won't say that name because it's a racial slur obviously but the term was historically used by europeans to refer to the coco who were an indigenous group in south africa when the chimney sweepers come out and they're covered in like the dark soot i guess they call them this certain name that i won't say mm -hmm. so now obviously because that term's in there they can't really take it out because it's all a part of the scene well have you noticed on disney plus if you're watching like a movie from like i don't know 60s like 50s 40s whatever yeah. it like has like a little disclaimer of we don't support you know things that i don't know exactly what it says but it says something about like when this was made we weren't aware that oh wow yeah because disney has all of their movies and tv shows and whatever from every time period every yeah. era of disney on disney plus so there are some movies from like past generations where people weren't aware it being offensive and it being racist and that kind of thing yeah i mean even if you think back to like when was it 2008 I think it was called Tropic Thunder. And um, what's that guy's name? Did Blackface. Oh my gosh. Luca and I were talking about this this morning. I had a principal. I think you were already, you literally, I think, graduated from high school at this point. We had a principal in our high school who came to school in Blackface on Halloween pretending to be Mr. T. I know. And I was literally thinking, like, I was telling Luca this morning about this story, and I'm like, how could you do that and think it's okay and, like, think you'll get away with it? He was fired. And that was, like, 2012. He was fired for that. Thank God. He should be. Also, our prime minister also that we have right now did blackface at a party for aladdin oh yeah do you remember how was he <laughs> but still in it, office it like came out that it was just a black and white photo and he was playing the genie or something didn't he say it was actually blue regardless no, no it didn't that wasn't no. the case conspiracy listen blackface is like one of the most disturbing truly terrifying things a hundred percent the fact that people ever thought that that was okay or normal or even some people to this day are like oh like whatever it's scary and yeah. i and it's not even just that it's anyone doing that like this is gonna be a hot take as well but like even the white chicks movie mm -hmm. even like that i don't like either because i just feel like it's creepy you know to play another race yeah like just in general full circle playing another race i think it's creepy it reminds me of texas chainsaw massacre like you're wearing someone else's face that's literally what it gives i don't think anyone should do it i mean even think about um back when tyra banks on uh america's next top model she did that one challenge where each girl had to be a different race for a photo shoot and so some of the white girls did yeah. have to be in blackface and like that's crazy and like these shows weren't that long ago it's listen it's never okay but like how you would think that at least in our lifetime that would be done you know what i mean like right and like i mean tropic thunder is still on a bunch of like streaming sites and like robert downey jr is the one who played the black man yeah. in the movie and he is a white man and it's all it's it's supposed to be like a funny joke you know what i mean like it's supposed to be funny but people and it's found not it funny. funny but people found it funny most people find it funny just but like if if i watch that movie now I, it i never I know, found it like, funny but no i know it's like how is this okay how is this okay i know and also why is it funny i don't find it funny i never have found it funny i don't think white chicks is funny i don't think any of it is funny ever yeah. like i think it's creepy and i don't know why people do it 
Yeah. It's so weird we're talking about this right now because I literally was telling Luca this morning about <laughs> really? the principal. That's Can you what imagine? Happens. Like, How what embarrassing. How embarrassing for our school. It was in the newspaper. It was everywhere. Everyone knew about it and everyone made fun of our school for that. And then we got like labeled like the hick school because oh my gosh and before we're that we're in the middle of the country before that we were the drug school i remember really yeah we were named the top school for drugs and i believe it our high school apparently is also one of like a hot spots for like grooming and trafficking trafficking yeah isn't that scary it's so scary the world right now is terrifying i don't want to go anywhere like, literally, on our way to the premiere to Toronto, I was looking outside, and the amount of women out walking by themselves as the sun's going down, and I'm thinking, like, they are brave because I can't even do that. No. In the daytime, I don't even want to walk by myself. Nope. And, like, people will say, like, oh, just live your life, you know, don't worry about those things, but, like, we have to worry. Especially We women. have to worry. How could we not worry these days, right? Everything in the news, everything happening, like, it's terrifying. And by the way, I never worried about these things until I was of age enough to, like, go out and do things on my own yeah. and have bad experiences. Yeah. The only reason why I have any ounce of fear in me when I'm doing anything going out anywhere is because of personal experience being harassed being followed being grabbed all of those things yeah it's not just the news that freaks me out it's yeah. like actual personal experience I bet every single woman watching has had an experience has been touched grabbed followed whatever. intimidated scared yeah all of us have stories it's yeah very it's true upsetting okay so Madonna accidentally shamed someone in a wheelchair at her show. If you guys have not seen the video, it is so awkward. Cringe. It's a little cringe. She's performing. She's singing. Everyone's standing up. They're all jumping around, dancing, like, whatever, like you do at concerts. And she, like, stops singing to point out that someone is sitting. And she's like, why are you sitting over there? Why are you sitting? And, like, she's, like, looking. She doesn't get why the person's sitting. And then she, like, walks closer and she realizes they're literally in a wheelchair and she goes like oh sorry that wasn't politically correct i'm so glad you're here and like start singing again it's so awkward and like it just makes me so frustrated why so many times performers call out people in the show right it's different to call out someone who's fighting or who's fallen over and they need medical assistance like i get that but like i've seen this other country singer i don't know what her name is but these two people were taking a selfie during her concert and she like stopped the show to be like why are you taking a selfie wasn't like, it shania twain no i forgot her name she's blonde i can't remember her name but she was kind of like your eyes should be on me like why are you taking a selfie at my show so i just feel like all these people are so narcissistic like people have medical issues even if he wasn't in a wheelchair maybe he has other things that he can't stand up or it could have been a girl i don't know what gender they were but it's just crazy to me you're gonna call out somebody i don't know I, at least she apologized and like corrected herself but awkward it's really awkward awkward yeah how do you recover from that <laughs> I don't how know. do you recover i would like stop the show and go home i'd be that embarrassed the poor person in the wheelchair too they were probably like i literally can't stand up and imagine like madonna <laughs> asking you to stand like she's jesus <laughs> like i would have tried no kidding yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's crazy. Like, the one person, like, you're there because you're a huge fan. Like, they were, like, in the front row. And imagine, like, your celebrity, like, the person you look up to the most is, like, why are you sitting? And you're in a wheelchair. I'm sorry. Like, that's just crazy to also, me. Also, how do you not notice giant wheels? She's old. Like, her eyesight's probably not great either. It's true. Isn't she 70? Listen, no age shaming. No. But my eyes are bad and no, I'm but, 30. Yeah, like, they, you deteriorate when you get right. older. So you can't see right. why people are sitting. <laughs> So maybe don't bring it up. <laughs> oh my God. It's okay. Terrible. People are confused about why Millie Bobby Brown's accent is gone. So I don't know if you what? remember, but she's always had an English accent. Yeah. Right? Or is it British? What's the difference? I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Like, what's no. the correct way to say it? There's like different accents within England, depending on where okay. you're from. I apologize. I don't know. Um. Anyway. <laughs> She's always had an accent ever since she was on talk shows as a kid. Like, she has this cute little accent. And now that she's doing interviews for her new movie, Damsel, mm -hmm. people notice that she sounds very American now. 
And so she was questioned about this in a recent interview, and she basically said that she takes on the accent of really whoever's interviewing her and what sort of like country or city she's in at the time of her press because she's done so many movies that she knows how to do every accent and she kind of just adapts to like whoever's speaking with her is what she was saying. I mean, it's fine. Like whatever. People are really like triggered by it for some reason. Like this weird on her or that people are It's weird on her. Like so she goes like to like India or Asia. Uh, probably not there (laughs) but like any accent like (laughs) so if she goes to like (laughs) ireland she's gonna maybe become irish she was saying she could do a really good australian accent and whenever she goes there she kind of puts it on a little bit like i don't know if she goes to jamaica she's she's gonna (laughs) i don't think those places but like (laughs) she's gonna speak patois no (laughs) more like just (laughs) movies that she's done i guess where she has had to make that accent she can kind of remember when she goes back there i don't know i think it makes sense like you're constantly doing different accents in different movies anyway that's the reasoning no behind other it. actors do that i I, <laughs> I did watch her new movie damsel and i thought it was really good like the reviews are very 50 50 i need to watch it's on my list i love a good dragon movie i love that it wasn't about her like you know being saved by a prince and yeah it wasn't a romance movie because at first when i saw it i was like oh it's like one of those like medieval romance <laughs> it's giving princess. the new snow white <laughs> oh yeah you, you're yeah. giving the new oh. snow white <laughs> it's not a love story. She doesn't need a man. She doesn't need, it's like, but it's Snow White. Oh, yeah. What's her name? Rachel Segler? I don't know. I don't know what her name is. She got a lot of hate. She doesn't need a man. It's not a love story. It's like, girl, it's Snow White. But that, yeah, if it's Snow White, make it Snow White. Like, make a new movie if you don't want that. So, like, that's exactly. weird. But, yeah, this movie is a whole new movie, <laughs> okay? So, I liked that, like, it was about her kind of overcoming the obstacle of Love her being that. thrown into a, a pit with creepy things down there. And it was really good. I liked it. But I also like dragons and fantasy and stuff. So, if you don't like that stuff, you probably won't like it. Have you seen the new Adam Sandler movie on Netflix? The one about space and yeah. Yeah, with the space spider. Yeah. Have you watched no, it? No, I haven't watched. Have you? I really want to watch it because just because of that scene. With the spider? Yeah. Okay, but what's so weird is that I thought it was based on a book that I read recently. I read a book called Project Hail Mary. And it's literally that. It's about a guy who goes into space, he gets stuck in space, and he meets this alien creature that looks like a spider crab. And he spends the entire crab? book. Yeah, it looks like a spider slash crab. <laughs> crab. Yeah. I don't know why crabs are so funny. (laughs) Crabs are so funny. I don't know why. And he spends the entire book that I read, like, you know, trying to communicate with this thing and they become friends. And it's a very sad, emotional, but also kind of comedic book. And so I saw the trailer for this and I'm like, oh, they must have adapted this. No, it's just a movie they created. So I'm like, are they copying Copying. this because this book came out a while ago i don't know i don't want to like say they are like just allegedly whatever but like when i saw it i was like oh okay i thought this was the book you know what i hate adam sandler i can look at the camera and say (gasps) that (laughs) i think he is so annoying i can't stand his voice and i can't stand his movies and do you want to know something and i don't care who has a problem with this i don't care i watched that what is it the jewels movie what is it called i have no idea no everyone knows this movie okay it's on netflix it's something about jewels that he was in uncut gems uncut gems (laughs) um i watched uncut gems when he gets shot at the end i took the biggest sigh of relief (gasps) like thank god someone did that because he was like so annoying and his character but like him also is annoying to me and so when they shot him at the end sorry it's spoiler but like people have already watched it's like three years old the movie when he got shot at the end i was like oh thank god thank god (laughs) because i couldn't stand his voice i heard he's a really nice person in real life (laughs) okay so adam sandler's a mood for sure his like outfits that he wears you know like he doesn't give a shit but he's nice he, like, clearly doesn't give a shit. But he's a good guy. He might be a good guy, but I don't want to watch any of his movies. But this movie, specifically, because of the spider, it's the spider I want to watch. Do you want to read the book that I read? It's, it's so good. It's the spider I want to watch. You can read about the spider. And also, I want to be the spider's friend. Then read the book I read. Did you want to be the spider crab's yes, friend? Yes, I did. He was yeah, amazing. Yeah, He was the funniest little dude. I wish that it wasn't Adam Sandler playing the human but I will watch it because it looks very interesting. I didn't know that you had a disdain for Adam Sandler. Honestly, can't 
stand him. Some people have actors that they literally just want to punch in the face. And for Luca, like, he feels that way about Will Ferrell, which I am oh, so upset no. about. I really am so upset about that. Oh, he's my favorite. I love Will Ferrell <laughs> so, so much. You and I both. If you ask Luca, it's like every time he comes on the screen, like, I just want to punch him in the face because he's annoying. Hmm. I feel that way about Adam Sandler. So you didn't like Fifty First Dates? No, no. Wow. If if a man like that was coming to me and I was unwell, mentally unwell, keep him away. <laughs> keep him away from me. I don't want that. That poor woman. Okay. He's like a stalker. I mean, to each his own. Everyone loves Adam Sandler. Everyone's gonna hate me for this. Listen, They're gonna hate me for saying. I that. was doing the celebrity hate last episode, so now it's your turn. <laughs> Yeah, clearly. <laughs> I'm sorry for all of you people that love Adam Sandler. Just, I'm on, I'm not on the Adam Sandler train. People seem to be triggered that Selena Gomez is posting, like, kissy, lovey-dovey photos <laughs> and videos with Benny Blanco. It's a bit much. I love them. Okay. I am so happy for her. Don't get me wrong. I'm so happy for her. Finally, right? Finally, she found somebody to replace Justin and... Now she can get over Justin Bieber. Okay, let's move on. I feel like she was over him. It was the people that weren't. Uh, and so I think no, now she's she posting. Was, she was not over him. She was making music about him. If you're making music about somebody, you're not over them. Sorry. Sorry, okay. babe. You were not over him. None of us were over it. We're over it now. Thank God. So happy for you. It's giving, like, revenge. Like, because of all the photos... It's like, you're doing too much, babe. I think she's just in love, and she just wants to show everybody that okay, she's in love. Okay, are we 16? Putting our relationships on blast online, like, for everyone to see every minute of the day? I don't know. I feel like everyone does that. No. Everyone does that. Every minute of the day? When you're first in love and you're dating someone? I think so. No. But also, like, I think what upsets me is that people are only mad about it because he's not the best-looking guy, right? Why are you laughing? I was wondering a little. <laughs> <laughs> She's really hot. She's okay, really I'll be hot. honest. Yes, sure. There was definitely a shift. I was taken back. I was a little taken back. Sure, I was a little shocked. <laughs> <laughs> but. No, no, no. I'm sure he's wonderful. No, here's the thing. My opinion changed when I started seeing his videos and his TikToks. He's a weirdo and I love it. Okay, I've never seen a video of him. Only the photos. Okay, then it'll change your opinion <laughs> because once you see how he actually is and his personality, I can see why that brings up his attractiveness. I think he's a goofball and I think that's why she likes it. He makes her laugh and I think that that well, makes anyone attractive. Listen, if we've learned anything from Ariana Grande... <laughs> okay, but that doesn't make any sometimes. sense. Sometimes. Because his personality doesn't bring it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, if Ariana Grande can get with spongebob and then she just like make a new song that's like this is my man my man <laughs> it's like i know the spongebob thing like overplaying it mm -hmm. i started watching only murders in the building okay it's so good jess it looks cute i know i love the old man i know and they're the best part of it but yeah. she's actually really good in it too yeah and it's like making me love her all over again because like i watched wizards of waverly place growing up and i loved it and i loved her yeah, in I did it too we kind of grew up with Selena Gomez, but she kind of, like, fell off the radar a little bit. Well, she got sick. Yeah. Yeah. And so I haven't really seen her in anything. Yeah. And then seeing her in this, she does a really good job, and it's so good, Jess. You have to watch okay, it. Okay, maybe I'll try. Yeah, it's really it looked, funny. It looks fun. Cute. It's really cute. So speaking of uh, stuff like that, new things, new Freaky Friday movie. I know it's been talked oh about for a while, Is it but- it works? Yes. So Lindsay Lohan was on an interview. I don't know who it was with, but they were asking, like, is this official? Like, are you guys actually filming yeah. this right now? And yeah. she was like, yeah. Ah! So I'm so excited. If you guys have not seen Freaky Friday, drop everything you're doing right now and watch it. It is so fun. But I also think, like, maybe if you weren't born in the 90s, it might seem a little goofy and cheesy. It's definitely a nostalgic yeah. thing, but it's also, like, just good it as is it is. It is a nostalgic thing. You're going to have to watch it with me. Yes. Because Luca doesn't give a shit. Well, neither does Ty. I don't even think Ty has seen the first one. Has Luca seen the first no. one? No. Then we need to go. We have to go together. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the next year or so it'll be out. I want to talk about Neuralink. It's terrifying. Yeah. And I think we need to discuss this yeah, we thoroughly. Do. Okay. We do. So a year after being cleared for the test, billionaire Elon Musk's Neuralink has implanted wireless brain chip into a human for the first time. They did the damn thing. They did it. 
into Mm -hmm. a human. It's done. So he announced that the patient received the implant on Sunday. This could have been any Sunday. I don't know when this article came out. (laughs) And is recovering well. Recovering well after getting something implanted in your brain. I mean, good for the patient. I'm glad they're okay. A device the size of a coin is surgically implanted into the skull with ultra thin wires going into the brain and developing a brain computer interface okay this is the future people Mm -hmm. the disc would register brain activity and send it over to a device such as a smartphone through a common bluetooth connection so your your bluetooth to your brain is bluetoothed to your devices the first product called telepathy would Mm -hmm. allow people to control their phones or computers just by thinking so just by thinking like oh i should check my mail your mail will just pop up on your phone so like your thoughts are freaking controlling your devices which is It seems like a sci-fi movie or something. How is this real? Planting the chip in the part of the brain that controls motor function would also enable people to overcome neurological disorders. Musk said that initial users would be those who have lost the use of their limbs. Listen, I can see how technology would be great for medical purposes like this. It's still scary though. Neuralink has tested out its chip on monkeys and pigs first because the poor animals are always the first ones to uh, get tested on. Yeah. The company showed several monkeys playing basic video games or moving a cursor on a screen through their Neuralink implants. Have you seen these videos? They're so disturbing. Like, just so weird to see an animal controlling something with their mind and it actually showing up on the screen. You've seen these videos? Crazy. Although Neuralink says no monkeys died as a result of their implants, there have been reports of issues with the implants on monkeys, including paralysis, seizures and brain swelling so it doesn't always go well and now this new person has it implanted and it's so new that like anything could happen at this point like we don't really know if it's gonna stay that they're okay right i'm sure they're getting paid millions of dollars (laughs) to be the very first person to have a chip implanted which is why they did it Mm -hmm. terrifying though luca was literally like who would would ever be stupid enough Mm -hmm. to do that if there's a price tag on it it's your brain i know they especially like being experimented on people I guess. who are very pro science <sighs> will probably be okay to do that or for... pro end of the world i don't know i think elon musk is a problem he's always like going on like podcasts and interviews saying like ai will be like the death of us all so stop stop making it why are you making it he's doing too much like Like ai and chat gbt he's like trying to make tech a part of us no but he's trying to to make it like it's god you know what i mean and like he's always talking about how this is like robots are gonna take over and this is how like the world's gonna end and they're gonna outsmart us but he's but he's creating it right what's wrong with him is he a robot (laughs) is he a robot is he an alien he's weird listen there are conspiracies about that. He doesn't look normal. He's like, very monotone. He's robotic. Right, right. I don't know. It, it freaks me out. It irritates me, too, because it's like, why are you saying, like, this is not a good idea? And then, and doing and then it. you do it. But he, like, wants control over every aspect of human life. Think about it. Like, cars. He wants to do space. He wants to go to space. He wants to colonize Took whatever. Mars. Twitter, social social media. media. He wants control over every aspect of people's lives, which is crazy. And I can't believe that, like, somebody like him who's like that smart and that capable like is doing so much just in our lifetime alone advancing us and accelerating like in his generation in his time on earth and everything that he's done it's like mind-blowing how far we've come in like Mm -hmm. science and technology since like we were kids since like the first phone came out and like where we are now and where we're headed and it's only been like our lifetime we were the last generation to not grow up with phones i know because we didn't get phones till we were in high school i know and these kids now will never know what it's no screen looks like it's like scary no kids are gonna grow up just naturally like just living life no phones no screens out playing playing with dolls no one's playing with dolls anymore because they have their phones like kids at six years old have smartphones now yeah it's really scary and like the whole thing with the billionaire bunkers and everything that's happening right now it just seems like we're headed like into revelation i was gonna say it's giving revelation it is especially the the brain chip thing because isn't that kind of a part of what it says in revelation everyone gets like a 
And the theory, Project Blue Beam or whatever it's called, but it makes sense, especially if you're like a Christian and you've read Revelations, like it talks about the world ending in fire. Yeah. It's the nuclear bombs and all of that. And then the billionaires going into the bunkers. And then mm-hmm. in the book of Revelation, it does talk about like people like seeking shelter in the earth in caves and in bunker like he doesn't say bunkers but yeah like underground and in caves and stuff like that it's all coming true well even <laughs> like the wars going on and stuff and people don't want to hear it but like it is very doomsday yeah yeah anyways i mean this is a really dark topic so we're not gonna like delve too far into it but uh just keep an eye out because you never know (laughs) you never know we're all gonna be lifted up into heaven yeah did i tell you about this i was home with ty it was probably 10 p.m and we started hearing trumpets outside our windows and it was weird because i was almost like is it a train horn you know what it's kind of like a distant kind of trumpety sound sounds like it's in the sky right yes and we're like in the country so we're Mm -hmm. not like near a lot of like traffic and stuff and so i'm like sitting there and i'm like okay i'll let it pass half an hour mandy the trumpets are going so i get up and i'm like ty i'm hearing trumpets outside i think we should step out on the porch just to like see what's going on out there so we like step outside in our driveway we're looking in the sky it just sounds like a distant trumpet it's so so weird and so i almost like wanted to like call you guys and be like were you taken to heaven like are you still here like (laughs) i was worried but like it does say in the bible that if you hear the trumpets like you're all good because you wouldn't even hear them i don't think if you're not going to heaven no everyone's gonna hear them babe everyone is everyone's gonna hear the trumpets really i thought it, you only hear them if no when this happens everyone is gonna see it and be aware of it but when it happens think of the progression of it all the antichrist has to christ Ki- antichrist antichrist the antichrist has to come first okay we need to move on and it's gonna be very <laughs> obvious when that happens because yes. it'll be one world leader yes i mean obviously like you guys know that we're christian this is what we believe everyone's gonna believe different things yeah i mean i think it'll probably happen if not in our lifetime at least like the next this is so scary i mean like Whenever we talk about stuff like this, I just feel so, I don't know, out of body. Really? Just with, like, the state of the world and how scary it is. The world is just, like, not good anymore. Yeah. And I I just feel like the time is coming and it should. And, like, if you don't believe, like, in God and Christianity and all, all of that, that aside global warming and everything else is gonna happen anyway so it's like no matter what you believe in the end is coming (laughs) sorry right right literally it's a good way to put it but the end is coming whether you are religious or not science is showing that the end is coming period yeah i just think god will come before then (laughs) you know what i mean anyway um (laughs) moving on how often do you wash your towel once a week yeah me too this question just spiked up a lot of people saying different things some people only wash it once a month is it men yeah yeah men if i didn't tell ty to change his towel i don't know if he would same goes for bed sheets men we do once a week yeah but men would not would not i think i asked ty i was like when we weren't living together like how often did you change your sheets he'd be like i don't even know once a month But then I saw people saying that, like, oh, they do it, um, like, every other day, like, their towel. And I actually heard that's better to do every other day because apparently, even though you're clean as you're washing off your body, E. coli grows on your towel, like, overnight. Even though there's, like, no, like, poop on your body, apparently just E. coli just lives on our skin and stuff, like, even if we clean. And so it just, like, multiplies on your towel overnight. So I was watching these, like, scientists saying that, like, every, like, 24 to 48 hours, you should change your towel. But that's so much laundry. (laughs) Like, could you imagine constantly doing that? Did you finish your trumpet story? Did you say what the trumpets were? We don't know. But we're still here. So. Okay. It was really ominous. It was just ominous. It was very strange. Do you remember back in like 2016, there was that viral video that went around that was like trumpets in the sky, but that was actually scary. Yeah. That was actually scary. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing like- I started to bring it back up. Back to doomsday. (laughs) (laughs) I just, because I was like, did she tell me what the trumpets were? We don't know. We don't know. I've had moments like that where I've heard trumpets in the sky. Yeah. It's ominous. It's definitely ominous. Because when I hear trumpets, I don't want to be underground. I want to be flying up to this guy. Yeah. (laughs) This is like so unserious. (laughs) Okay. 
People are saying that if you spell socks super fast, you sound Spanish. S-O-C-K-S? S-O-C-K-S. You were trying to sound no, Spanish. Yes, I wasn't. you were. Yes, no, you were. No, it wasn't. Nobody says is. S-O-C-K-S. I'm not trying. I'm just saying it. Never, ever <laughs> would you ever say S-O-C-K-S like that. White or right. <laughs> That was so funny, by the way. <laughs> it was. Luca died when he saw that. I think I agree. You S-O-C-K-S. Are too much. S-O-C-K-S. 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 I promise I'm not trying to sound anyway. S-O-C-K-S. <laughs> You're saying S, Jess. Like, S-O-C-K-S. You don't fool me. You don't fool me. I'm You're not... saying S. You're putting on a little thing. Say it again. You're like S-O-C-K-S. You have to say it fast. S-O-C-K-S. Faster. S-O-C-K-S. Perfect. You were like S-O-C-K-S. 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 I promise I'm trying to say it right. normally. All right. You don't fool me. <laughs> you don't trust me. No. Okay. Love is Blind finale. Woo! We need to describe something that occurred because I think we have some thoughts about it. I think mm. you know, the whole world really does. There is a guy on the show named Clay. And oh, Clay. Clay. Oh, Clay. And he has an interesting home life. He's afraid to commit because his father cheated on his mother as he was growing up and he witnessed a lot of it. Like his dad would literally drive him in the car as he was going to cheat on his mother and he would witness his father just being unfaithful. And that's all he knew growing up. And his mother decided to stay with him for a while. They're not together anymore, but she really put up with like a lot of what he did. And so Clay thinks that like cheating is like hereditary and that he's gonna do it because that's all he knew. So I don't think it was just that he was afraid to cheat though. I don't think that he understands what a marriage stands for and like that a marriage is supposed to be sacred right so he's confused about that he doesn't see it that way because he never saw it growing up that way right so spoilers i mean it is the finale he doesn't end up marrying ad he Which says is crazy he says i don't at the altar biggest and then, mistake of his life yeah ad was opinion. amazing and then it shows a conversation which i'm surprised they even aired this mm. a conversation between that father and mother who are not together anymore and basically she was telling him the reason why his son is afraid of commitment is like we said he witnessed all these awful things growing up and she actually like confronted him in front of the camera it was powerful and it was a really powerful moment where they actually got to like kind of talk it out and maybe the father's finally realizing he Mm -hmm. needs to have a conversation with his son to say like what i did was wrong and you should not mimic my actions and marriage is not supposed to be that way his father never apologized to him had a conversation with him but, about it but in that conversation though i didn't think that he got what she was saying to him like, i he think made at excuses. the end he was i don't think he got it you still don't think he got it even if he gets it he's still making excuses the excuses my life growing up wasn't easy and right. i had a hard childhood and she had a hard childhood we don't know what her childhood was like but she said we both had a rough upbringings yeah but that can't be an excuse for continuing the cycle right of trauma and pain and whatever and it just made me frustrated because when she was confronting the dad and then i'm a parent now if you're confronting the father of your child about he's a grown man now and he just made a huge mistake at the altar and he doesn't understand the value and sacredness of a marriage and what a marriage means and what it stands for that has a lot to do with the way the father treated the mother growing up and what he saw and whatever Mm -hmm. that is the fact and that is the problem and he never acknowledged that and he never apologized for that or unpacked that with his son and none of that has anything to do with his childhood growing up. Right. It's just not fair to bring that up as an excuse because then it's like the cycle continues. Everyone who was a kid, who became an adult, who had a kid of their own, and it continues and continues and continues, will make excuses for the mistakes that they make with their kids because of their traumatic upbringings and childhoods, whatever. You can't use that as an excuse. You're an adult now. So many people have traumatic upbringings. So many people have situations in their childhood or bad relationships with their parents or things that they saw or witnessed or whatever that triggers them and that they have to work through. When you're an adult, it's up to you to 
deal with that. To get therapy, yeah. to get help, better yourself. And oh my God, if you decide to have children and you haven't done the work. Right. That's a huge, huge problem. And let's say, okay, you come from a time when therapy wasn't really a thing or you come from a time when therapy was kind of frowned upon. Some families and cultures still kind of frown upon therapy. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you use an excuse i just i don't feel bad for you because you <laughs> you continued the problem with your kid it just it triggers me <laughs> because i just don't think that it's valid to use an excuse as to why you made a mistake with your kid so that's the father do you now think that clay is kind of deciding to keep the trauma going not marrying ad well ad it's clear that ad has said you need to get help you need to go to therapy you need to work through so he you should need do to that. get right is what she said he shouldn't have gone on the show because he wasn't ready he wasn't ready for marriage no but that's the whole point of the show exactly yeah but that's why at the end she was like i wish that i was enough for him to get right yeah and then when he was like i'll do the work i'll go to therapy whatever like you should have done that already. Right, before. So, yeah, I think that he made the biggest mistake because AD would have made a amazing wife. Right. And also, his excuse in the confessional interview where he was, like, her finances or whatever... It's all bullshit. That annoyed me. Yeah, yeah. That really annoyed me. I don't know. I just feel like a woman... And this is also, like, a hot take. <laughs> I feel like a woman brings so much to the table. A woman that's not working, okay? Because I don't think she works. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't I seem like no she idea. works. I'm not sure. But it's clear that he works a lot and she doesn't. I feel like a woman coming to the table, she makes the house a home. She makes the groceries a meal. And, like, God willing, she's bringing her womb, you know? I feel like that's enough. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm very old school and I'm very, I'm okay. a traditionalist. I am. Not everyone's like this, okay? I'm a working woman. I own my own business. I'm like a boss babe. I work. But I see a lot of value in a stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home wife. Yeah, of course. And I wish times were still like that, honestly. As long I'd as love it's to be a stay-at-home mom. not a forced situation. And that mother, like, no. loves that. A hundred percent. In my traditional mindset, the man who, like, runs the house, works, brings home the bacon, so to speak, that man who's, like, leading their household has to be worthy to lead. Has to be a good, faithful, and kind, and loving, and caring. Not, like, make me a sandwich, bitch. And I'm not <laughs> talking about that traditional, like, that old school. Like, you have to be worthy to lead your household. And you have to be a woman worthy to, like, also be making the house a home. And, like, you know what I mean? I feel like we all have our strengths and weaknesses. And just when I see on the television, like, a man being, like, her finances aren't right. Like, to me, I'm, like, turned off by a man like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, you're expecting me to, like, be equal to you and bring home the same amount of money as you. I just, I don't know. It's like, if you want more money, then work more. But you can be equals in different ways, right? So maybe he's the money bringer, but then she's but having a I child mean. for him. And But that's what I mean. It's like, we're not doing the same things because <laughs> you're a man and I'm a woman. We have yeah. different roles. And that's how I feel about it. People can have their own opinions. I'm not saying my way is the right way. I'm just saying that I see value in both. Yeah. Being different. Our home, like me and Ty, we're very non-traditional. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, like I bring You're in the, bringing home the bacon. Right. He's making it. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, Literally. <laughs> he, and listen, Ty works hard at what he yeah. does, but like I do work more and he makes our meals and he cleans the house the majority of the time yeah. and i'll be working as he's doing it so we're very non-traditional listen i'm all for a stay-at-home dad <laughs> i'm all for a stay-at-home dad stay-at-home husband if he's pulling those roles and doing the chores and cooking the meals and pulling his weight while you work i think that's fantastic yeah i think that's great as long as everyone's doing the best in whatever role they're in yeah, and I don't see me up here and Ty here. No. We're here. That's what I it's mean. It's just we're doing different things, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I feel like behind every king, there was the queen giving him advice. You know what I mean? Like And who birthed him. Exactly. <laughs> like, I just, we're made different. Yeah. 
So I feel like the expectation is for our strengths and weaknesses, wherever that is and where that lies. Right. I didn't like that comment. That made me see him in a different light when he was saying that. Well, I never liked him to begin with. Because AD, what she's bringing to the she's table. She's amazing. She's, ba- she's a badass bitch. Yeah. I really like her, and she would have made a really good wife. Yeah, she would have. I think so. The conversation between the the mom and the dad, that was... That was really sad. And, like, also I want to say good for the mom confronting the dad Mm -hmm. about what he did because I feel like there's also a lot of parents out there that will sort of, like, lift up their chin and not ever admit. Right. Or let the other one know that they did something wrong. Right. And, like, I agree with, like, maybe don't confront your significant other in front of your small children because you want to feel like a team and you want to be seen as, like, a team, Mm -hmm. an impenetrable force, (laughs) the two of you. But I think it's important to, like, call out the other one if they're, like, actively making a huge mistake and creating, like, trauma. Yeah, of course. In their children. I agree. Yeah, I cannot believe that's the first time on, like, Love is Blind that I've seen an actual, like, real, real deep conversation, especially with the parents on the show, you know? It was just shocking to me. I was surprised. And also, can we just say, like, the TikTok that you sent me where she was doing the happy and you know it, but, like, being like, it's okay to just say sorry. Oh, yeah. It's important that if you're like apologizing for something it's i'm sorry yeah that's it no but not but my childhood no no i'm sorry if your children come to you with pain and trauma and they're upset about something or you did something to them and they're confronting you about it talking to you about it it's i'm sorry not i'm sorry but i'm sorry and i'm sorry no no excuses are good enough. Yeah, 100%. Never. You need to validate them in what they feel. Ah, oh, I, I know, feel I know, so I know. strongly about this, Jess. Like, I am a parent now, and I want so badly for Ophelia to come to me with anything that I've done to her or I've hurt her. I want her to be able to tell me so that I can fully be like, I'm so sorry, I'm going to do better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel so strongly about this. I'll never trauma dump on my kid. Things that I've gone through in my life, guess what? That's for my friends and my husband for me to talk to, not my kids ever. I'm there for my kids to support them and they come to me for help and guidance. I don't come to them for help and guidance and justification and trauma dumping and all that shit. Yeah. That's what your husbands are for. And that's how you stop this cycle. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) This has been deep. It's so funny because last week it was so like silly and we couldn't stop laughing. And this week it's deep. Everything we've been talking about, we might lose some followers. I mean, we say our opinion and this is how we feel. And I just want to reiterate that if you ever feel differently than us or you have a different opinion or a different stance and that is okay, you can even comment it. If you're being respectful and you're saying like, listen, I hear you out, but this is how I was raised or this is what I believe or this is my religion, whatever, like that is okay. We are inclusive here. We love everybody. If you're respectful, that's great. Mm-hmm. We love to hear your side. We're just open but people. But I feel like that's what people listen to podcasts for. Different opinions. Different opinions and hot takes. Right. Saying things that other people are afraid to say. Right. I'm not going to listen to a podcast where people are afraid of offending other people. Or sometimes if I'm watching podcasts that like I agree with every single thing, I'm like, it's kind of boring because I already had these thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe we're a different take for people. Or, like, if you have an opinion and I have a differing opinion and we can have right. a discussion. And sometimes we we don't agree. <laughs> no, of course. And But that's also what makes it interesting, right. though, too, because there is that sort of banter back and forth yeah. between keep, you and I. Keep life fresh and interesting. <laughs> okay, toxic movie sets. We're going to start off with Terminator Salvation, okay? A lot of people remember when Christian Bale absolutely lost his mind on set. It was recorded him yelling at a person on set. It was brutal. So he played John Connor and in February of 2009, a recording of Bale on set was released to the public and people were mortified. You can hear him screaming at the film's cinematographer. His name was Shane Hurlbut. As he walked on 
on set to fix a light. So this guy was fixing a light as they were filming a scene, and I guess it just distracted. He wasn't walking in front of the camera, but he was walking in a way that Christian Bale was kind of getting out of the scene a little bit. It was behind. Right. So directly in Christian Bale's view. eyesight. Right. So he was kind of like distracted How when he saw him. How dare he? <laughs> So, How dare he do that? If you have not heard this recording, maybe <laughs> even just pause this right now. And It's only a two or three minute little recording clip. And then you can kind of hear our take on it. It is brutal. We can't show it because he swears every other word. He's mad. He's very mad. I love him. We were saying that we like his accent. I love him. I don't it's... care. That is no way to talk to somebody ever, period. That's it. That's no way to speak to another human being, period. Let alone in the workplace right however <laughs> christian bale he takes his job extremely seriously that man has gained like 300 pounds for a role and lost it yeah, for he was roles. like 90 pounds he for another one is an incredible actor i don't he disagree takes his job extremely mm -hmm. seriously it might have been one of those situations where he just had had enough and he wasn't able to contribute like authentically to a scene because he was taken out of it by somebody else doing something in the background. And I can see why that would be so disruptive and losing his like, I don't know, his space of like being in the scene because actors are very like method. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they, they really put themselves in that scene. So if something's going on in the background, like... Well, especially when you're memorizing lines, that's already hard enough to like remember everything you're supposed to memorize and then having things moving around. Like I understand the irritation, but... It went on for a long time. It was like a four minute... It was ridiculous. I think he is allowed to stop the scene. He could have been like, guys, stop, stop, stop. I can't concentrate. Walk Can someone away. get that guy off the set? I'm sorry. You're, you're annoying me. You're in my way. That's Can you it. please get off the set? Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah. People would have done that for him. He's a huge he actor. He was like calling him names and like, he's like, you're walking in front of the thing. la di da Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's like, you're an amateur. You're such an amateur. So Bale threatens to destroy the lighting equipment and to even leave the movie for good if Hurlbut ever disrupts the set again. He also threatened to quit if the bosses didn't fire the dude, which is a lot. You're using your power there in a, a bit of an extreme way, I think. So it says the entire crew was walking on eggshells after that tantrum, understandably. While they were doing the press tour for the movie, he did apologize profusely. He did say, there's no excuses for what I did. It was okay. wrong, it was unprofessional. But then he did say an excuse. He was like, I am a method actor. And in that moment, I was John Connor. He was saying that like he had hyped himself up to be this really intense character. And so when he got upset, he was getting upset in character without realizing it. I don't love um, that excuse. I don't know about not realizing it, but yeah. I can see that. I can see how the scene was probably intense and he was already yelling probably in the scene and stuff. And so he was kind of on that hype. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like, it, there's no excuse. It's not like you forget where you are and who you are. You know what I mean? No, that's what I'm saying. Not realizing doesn't make any sense. But I can see if you get yourself into that zone, it's hard to get out of that zone. Especially in the middle of a scene. Right, but then like, fine. Yell for five seconds. Be like, get him off the no, set. No, no, no. And like then move I said, on. <laughs> like I said, there's no good reason to ever speak to another human being like no. that. Period. No, and I looked up this guy who was the cinematographer, and he d hasn't really done any movies since, so I am worried that <laughs> his reputation kind of got... Worried. Well, yeah, when you're working with an actor that big, and he calls you out like that, and it goes viral around the world, he probably struggled to get jobs after that, which is kind of sad, because, like, I did look into his stuff, and he is very talented, and he seems like a nice man. Like, he looks like a nice old man. Like, I looked at him like, aw. You know those old men you see pictures of, and you're like, aw. I feel bad for him. He was probably not realizing he was distracting Christian Bale and it, la di da. Just, you're walking around, la di da. <laughs> I love oh his accent. God. I know, me too. What is he? Um, is he Australian? No, 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 no. Is he English? What he's, is he? He's English, but he's one of those forms that you said, I think. Okay. I'm not sure which one it is, but I love him. One of my favorite movies ever that we just rewatched recently is The Prestige. It's in my top five favorite movies, and he was able to use his real accent in the movie. Aww. So as I was listening to him screaming this morning, because I was re-listening to it, like, it sounds just like him in the movie. <laughs> Have you watched the Edgar Allan Poe movie? I don't know if it's Edgar Allan Poe. Maybe it is. I'm not sure. But it's like, it's on Netflix, and it's Christian Bale. 
and it's no i haven't seen that i don't remember what it's called i think it's supposed to be about edgar Allan Poe. is it about the blue eye blue eyed raven is that what it's called uh, not raven but it's something about a blue eye i think blue eyed raven no yeah i thought it's just called like the blue eye or something you're gonna find out i haven't seen it though i love his acting is amazing and i do know that he is a method actor that's why he i didn't know that he was a method actor i was gonna say if he is a method actor that would explain the extreme frustration right but not a good excuse not a good excuse maybe why he was that hyped the pale blue eye yeah see blue eye something about blue eye does he play edgar Allan poe in it i don't even know what that movie was about maybe i just heard about it oh my god it is about edgar Allan poe Hmm. I should watch that. We should actually do a whole conspiracy about Edgar Allan Poe's death. It is crazy. Mm -hmm. It is crazy. Didn't they say he just, like, drank himself to death? It's so much more than that. It's actually really disturbing. He had a really hard life. Probably. He did. The Shining. So this was a 1980s horror film starring Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. And Duvall was played by Wendy... No. Wendy (laughs) Torrance. (laughs) She's not real. I don't know why that was so funny. (laughs) The character Wendy Torrance was played by Duvall, and she was terribly overworked by the film's director, Stanley Kubrick. Uh, She said it was almost unbearable when she was on set. Kubrick commanded the film crew to not show any sympathy for Duvall and asked them to ignore her completely. He also never complimented her on her scenes while constantly complimenting and praising Jack Nicholson. And she said she would cry all day, and whenever she got called for a scene it'd be like trauma and like years after she finished filming this she just couldn't get over it she'd have nightmares it was awful and i have seen um behind the scenes like tiktoks and stuff we're like posting behind the scenes footage of the movie and like you can see him yelling at her i know and there are parts where like she's yelling back like i know and it's so sad and i mean and she's so cute yeah she was really cute she's really cute it's really sad what's become of her now yeah, like she has a lot she of lost her mind mental health issues and she's like homeless now and like people like will see her sleeping in her car and like go take selfies with her and like she's not okay so sad and people think it's just because did you see that interview that she had with dr phil (sighs) that was awful that he did that to her but but also like didn't he say he was gonna get her help and like did he i don't think so did he even do that clearly not i think he speaks a lot but doesn't ever really do much you know (laughs) that's what i mean like in (laughs) all of his interviews like he always interviews these like crazy people and then he's always like we're gonna send them to a facility we're gonna get them help like and like does he and then he just goes home to his mansion but and does he hopes for the best what are you doing dr phil i think his staff tries to organize things but i don't know what he's comes probably like all right so here's the pamphlet here's the bill like and they're right, like right, oh right. i can't i can't afford this <laughs> yeah yeah by the way this is half a million dollars so i'm not paying for it I don't really know what happens, so this is all alleged thoughts. Like, truly, if anybody knows what Dr. Phil actually does do to help. Yeah, when the camera turns off, what, what, is, is, he what doing? is he doing? Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. Do you remember when, like, mom used to religiously watch Oprah and Dr. Phil? Mm-hmm. Like, back to back. Yeah. Like, we'd get home from school and, like, it would already be on. And whenever Dr. Phil leaves, he, like, walks away with his wife. Right, right. She'd, like, stand up in the audience and he'd, like, walk away yeah, with her. Yeah, it's always, and, like, like, a whole thing. Like, him walking away with his wife. And it was always, like, the most unhinged stories of, like, family, like, abuse crazy i mean some of it must have been staged because some of these things were so absurd yeah that like why would these people just go on a talk show to like discuss it like just sometimes i'm like what what do they get out of it like telling the world their issues you know what i mean i don't know i definitely liked oprah better than dr phil but like i I think (laughs) dr phil is such a meme now yeah you're ugly you're stupid (laughs) you're a bitch (laughs) <laughs> i hate you yeah he has like a sound bite on tiktok now yeah i know and people like put it with their like dogs yeah like looking at them funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> the wizard of oz i've done tons of videos and Me i think too. you have too about just the different things that have gone wrong on set the asbestos the oh uh God. the witch catching on fire the actress who played the witch different things but i wanted to talk about the more serious things that i know i didn't cover on my channel because my channel is more for families this podcast is not this is for our older audience. By the way, I saw a seven-year-old comment on our podcast uh, this past week, and they said, like, I'm seven. Am I allowed to watch? I can't see swearing. If you're seven, please stick to my main channel video. Please. Like, I'm hoping this is going to be, like, a 16 plus. You know what I mean? Like, older teens, young adults, adults, 
whatever. Just a reminder. Listen, we're not in control of... We're not, but I saw... We're not their parents. When I saw I'm seven, I was like, no, I want to protect you. Don't stay here. Well, do you remember... <laughs> do, have you seen that video of, like, Euphoria? They were, like, at, like, some, like, meet and greet, or they were having, like, a and a and then there was, like, this little girl who was like, this question is for Zendaya. Oh, And Zendaya yeah. was like, why, why are, are you, you watching? watching? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> You should not be watching the show. Ooh. We couldn't even watch Pokemon when we were little. And that's a cartoon. Or The Simpsons. Simpsons are for adults. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Wizard of Oz. So these are actually really awful and serious things that Judy Garland went through. So she was actually groped on set by the actors who played the Munchkins, who were 40-year-old men. Mm-hmm. Also, the head of MGM Studios, his name was either Louis or Lewis, I'm not sure. Mayaber told Judy she was too overweight to play Dorothy so they forced her on a strict diet of chicken soup, black coffee, cigarettes, and pills that would shrink her appetite. Mm -hmm. She also had to wear tape and a corset to flatten out any of her curves. And by the time she was done filming, she was reportedly addicted to barbiturates Mm -hmm. and amphetamines. So sad. Which is crazy. And I mean, that was definitely the start of her downfall with mental health. Imagine being prescribed cigarettes and like pills and things to make you not hungry that's awful it's awful but it was like the norm back then like a lot of actors and models and stuff were popping pills Mm -hmm. taking things to up their energy because they weren't eating so you become addicted to drugs and you're severely underweight Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you feel sick and a lot of these people their mental health declined rapidly and i mean judy garland you know she passed away it was really sad so into her adulthood, she took all of this trauma, Mm -hmm. right? Very sad. It is. This one might surprise you, The Notebook. So this is a romance movie with Ryan Gosling and Rachel. Like one of my favorite romance movies ever. I've seen it twice. It's good. I'll be honest, her character annoys me. She's too squealy. Every time I watch it, all I hear is squealing. But that's what's cute about I, her. I Listen, I understand. She's so cute. Listen, Adam Sandler annoys you. She annoys the shit out of me when I watch that movie. She just squeals the whole time, and I'm always like, ugh, I gotta plug my ears. But that's what makes it funny. Like, she's that's irritating. her character. I don't get how he is attracted to that. I'm sorry. She's off the rails. She's off the rails. Okay, so the squealing is only when she's a kid, though. Right, she... but that's long enough. It's long enough for me in the movie. It's like a good 40 small. minutes of the movie. Okay. And it then is. she, like, gets angry and hits him all the time. I just... I yeah, like, it is a little abusive. I... That's not okay. But that's, like, the time period. That was totally normal. Right, but not okay. Not okay. <laughs> no, when she's hitting him in the face. I, but it's whenever, whenever she's mad at him, she's hitting him and squealing. And I just cannot. But that was, like our grandparents time period i love the time period like i love i love the way they're dressed and i love the way it is it's great They're extremely extreme back then listen they had no form of like communication other than smacking no 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 like think about how high emotions would be back then because you're not calling them on the phone all people communicated was letters you know what i mean so imagine how much you would feel for another person that you just want to slap them no i'm trying I'm to see saying, where you're going in with this. general in general like emotions were a lot higher than that's why like music was a lot more emotional sentimental i find people were a lot more in love back then because think about how much you would miss somebody when you didn't see them because right. there was so no it's more texting them passionate there was no, it's more passionate it's not an excuse to hit anybody i'm just saying that i could see emotions being a lot more higher back then and, like, think about, like, all those old-fashioned movies, black and white movies, where the woman hits the man. Like, slaps him. How dare you? What's that TikTok that was going around of that black and white movie where the girl's like, it's snowing. Oh, <laughs> you you stop with that kind of talk. What does he say? You shut up with that kind of talk. And she was She's just, like, like excited oh, about Christmas. Snow. <laughs> you shut up with that type of talk. You know how they talk in old movies? It's the transatlantic accent. Why? Because people didn't actually talk like that. I think it's to enunciate. Is that the way to say it? Pronunciate? Enunciate? Announce. It's to announce. Let me say it this way. It's to (laughs) pronounce words more clear Mm -hmm. on cameras because they didn't have the best microphones and stuff. So I think they did it so people could understand it better. But it wasn't just about enunciating. It was like, oh, it's snowing. Enunciate is how you say it. Enunciate. (laughs) We're But, like, the men would talk so fast. You shut up with that kind of talk. I, I heard that perfectly. No, but, like... That was actually really good. <laughs> well, 
because you know i used to gr- i grew up watching in the 20s but why were the men so unhinged like she was excited about the snow are you sure it wasn't like taken out of context okay we'll play the clip Cut. like in the podcast okay okay we'll put it now oh it's snowing isn't that wonderful i never felt so much like christmas in all my life don't you sherry dear Shut your nasty little face. I don't remember what it was, but they would have just heard it. <laughs> oh, look outside. Yeah. It's snowing. Yeah, they're always miserable. Like, whenever I watch, like, old films, like, the men are always miserable. Oh, they're so sexy. And, like, their wives are, like, the most irritating thing they've no. ever witnessed. Okay, Luca and I just watched The Sound of Music. Oh, I love the that. The Captain. Oh, don't even get me started. <sighs> The captain. Don't even get me started. The captain. I would do whatever he asks me to do. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! But, like, the best part is when you watch it, Fräulein Maria, when she's like, I will not respond to the whistle or whatever. I would respond. And then <laughs> you think, like, what a badass bitch. Because then he walks away and she, like, blew the whistle and she's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what your uh, call is. I know. It's iconic. It's iconic. That's why he's into her, because she talks back. And nobody ever talks back. And she changed him. Well. She changed him. She's, he's soft to her. That's what I mean. He softens which, for her. Which we love. I love story arcs like that. Rowan. Yeah. Oh, Rowan. Yeah. He literally punched Rowan Aylin and Aelin. But like. Beauty and the Beast. Okay, you've got to stop. What? You've got to stop with Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> What's wrong? You've got to stop. He is the ugliest prince there ever was. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry. I disagree. He is the ugliest prince. Do you also like the Snow White prince? Ew. Yeah. Ew. That's how bad it is. He has it's like lipstick on. Bad. <laughs> Today. <laughs> That's what Snow White is so. <laughs> I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. For the one I know. To find me. To find me today. Today. And he just like comes in without being yeah, asked. Yeah, she got scared. Oh. <laughs> and runs away. Oh. Yeah. You sound like her. Maybe I should like do Im- impressions of people. You should I think be, I'd be good at it. A Disney princess. Oh, do you know who's a Disney princess? Who? My mother in law. She's a Disney princess. In real life. She comes to the house, is so sweet and soft spoken and gentle, and she like looks after my baby when i like am done work then like she'll give me the baby and then she'll like flutter over to the kitchen and like make bread make some cookies she makes bread yeah it's snow white she bakes bread after like five hours of watching my kid (laughs) she's like here you go and she goes to the kitchen she makes bread and she's always like excited to like hear like stories and like what you have to say and like things that are going on in your life and she's so like into it and like i told her the other day i was like you know what you're like and she's like what i'm like you're like a disney princess and she's like what and i'm like yeah like you're making bread (laughs) i don't know i just she is snow white she reminds me of like a disney princess she's just that perfect does she sing no do you sing mom like i need to know wait maybe she should because if she can sing that's everything. We should take her to Disney. Well, I asked Luca if she s- would sing to him when he was a baby. Yeah. And he said yes. Oh, Yeah. Little Luca. Little Luca. <laughs> Little Luca. Did you ever watch the Luca movie? <laughs> yes. You right when Luca? it came out. Right when it came out. <gasps> Did yeah. you like it? Not really. Oh, okay. But you just watched it because it was Luca. It was Luca and it was like Italian. It was like an Italian. Oh, I love that. But they're like aliens in the sea they're they're like fishes i don't know they're like magical mermaids or something i was just expecting it to be more like coco vibes have you watched coco no jess i don't really watch modern no you did this with moana and i proved you wrong i proved you wrong right you need to watch coco it's on the exact same level of goodness okay coco is incredible okay you gotta watch oh, wait, coco I will. I will it doesn't even matter because now that i have a kid jess will have to watch these <gasps> movies and she doesn't have a choice i would like to fourth wheel to the movies when you and luca go with ophelia i want a fourth wheel so we're a full car but also I go. you and i and her could just go yeah <laughs> like we could have girls days oh my god and girls nights i will see anything you want our sister see. day will become sister niece day yeah sister daughter niece day yes Aww. okay the, the notebook <laughs> as we were <laughs> yes tell me what happened okay ryan gosling and rachel mcadams 
The two hated each other on set. It got so bad that Ryan Gosling asked the director if he could bring in another actress just for him to read lines with. So when he was practicing for scenes, he did not want to practice with her because apparently she annoyed him so much and vice versa. The standoff eventually exploded into shouting matches between them that made everyone on set feel very uncomfortable. Whoa. But then after filming the movie, they dated in real life for two years. So enemies to lovers enemies to lovers Did they really date apparently for two years do you know ryan gosling is married to eva longoria no <laughs> wait she's from desperate housewives who are you talking about isn't that her name eva? whenever i hear eva i think of longoria but she was the one with like the little girl that she treated awfully because she was chubby eva mendez oh i wasn't thinking her she's gorgeous though wow mm -hmm. she's so pretty they're a hot they're definitely good looking couple i mean i don't think ryan gosling's attractive I can see his appeal. I can't have this kind of talk. All right, you right. and your beauty beast. Be <laughs> he, is a, he is a beauty beast. Today. You, uh. you can stay with your beast, man. And I'll keep my Ryan Gosling. Human beast looks like every classic, like, fey. Okay, Tamlin maybe, yeah. Yeah, but Tamlin's Tamlin. attractive just because he's annoying. No, he's so Tamlin attractive. is not attractive and I never thought he was. Lucian I was into. And this is always a fight. This is always a fight. It always comes down to Akatar. <laughs> Every time, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So clearly, if you like human beast, then you're a Tamlin girly. Whoa. And a Tamlin girly forever. That's I'm really offended. For <laughs> anyone to tell me that, after Tamlin, what I've been through, you're a <laughs> after what I've been through with these books, go to a spring court and Ew. stay there. No. He needs you think I like He spring? needs a lover. Look at me. I'm night court. He needs a lover you look like the autumn court right now lucian yeah you i do look like the autumn court yeah they're baddies over there they are baddies okay we need to get to the last movie <laughs> 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 but i just want to talk about Agatha. <laughs> okay listen just just gave me all the books i cannot wait i'm gonna read them please do not akatars crescent city <laughs> we're still in crescent city. okay the last movie is called roar what what is this? Roar, like a lion. But what is it? Do so, we even know? This movie's from 1981, and the reason why I'm bringing it up is because it's said to be the most dangerous movie ever made, with 70 cast members injured on set. <laughs> okay. It's supposed to be a comedy action movie about a family that lives alongside lions, tigers, and <gasps> other animals in Africa. Now, oh, no. they were adamant about using real animals. No. Which, first of all, dangerous. Second of all, the poor animals who have to be trained to, like, no. be on set and stuff, it's awful. Awful. it's like a circus we're not okay with using real animals no so it wasn't the safest decision so one of the main actors was hit by a lion right through the hand on the first day of filming another actor was attacked by a lion and had to get 50 stitches and facial reconstruction <gasps> surgery <gasps> another main actress fractured her leg and hand after being tossed off an elephant and then a lion attacked her and she had to get 38 stitches on her scalp so many of the crew actually oh. experienced trauma like this because the animals just went wild no pun intended because they are or maybe my pun <laughs> they was were intended. acting like animals <laughs> they were acting like a bunch of animals and i slaughtered them like animals <laughs> that's a star wars reference. and not just the men the, the women and the too. children too and i'm like <laughs> no now that you have a child do you think it's hot that anakin no. Jess, did you see what those things look like? And the way that they treated his mother? Whoa. I don't care if they have kids. Whoa. It's like if a demon has a kid, are you going to protect it? No. It's a demon. Didn't they have spikes on their head? They looked crazy, so I don't care. You don't care. Also, how, when you're watching the, <laughs> that scene, how do you know which are men and women? Like, they all look weird as f Like, they all are cloaked and they have the mom like tortured by the way we're talking about a scene from star wars where anakin goes to avenge i his slaughtered mother. them like animals <laughs> there are these like creatures on the planet who stole away his mother and she eventually died in their camp and they tortured her and killed her she ended up dying and he slaughtered them like animals and he slaughtered them like animals the women and the you're like i don't see well. anything wrong here but here's the thing it's not about like women and children it's like they are literally evil creatures well they're not women and children they're like evil creatures on this planet that are killing and enslaving people so whatever he slaughtered them so what uh, what about the so younglings what? oh that was horrible oh yeah. i can't even think about that oh my god that poor little boy the one little boy the little boy that was like master <laughs> 
We don't know what to do. They're everywhere. Aww. Aww. I can't believe he did that. You know, sometimes I forget that he did that. <laughs> because when Anakin is walking with his yellow eyes... <laughs> I forget that he did that. Yeah. And I choose to forget that what he did murder? that. What murder? The meme. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you have a crush on, like, bad Anakin, and it's like, yeah. what murder? <laughs> so Anakin did some horrible things on his rise to becoming Vader, which I don't agree with, but he's a daddy. Yeah. When I look into his yellow eyes, I forget everything he's done wrong. Mm-hmm. I forgot. And if I were Padme, I would have joined him. I would have too. Yeah. I honestly would have. Yeah. Or I would have gotten with Obi-Wan after. (laughs) Honestly. Think about Obi-Wan. He's a true Jedi, right? The best of them. Oh, yeah. The best of them. Yeah. Well, they're not allowed to have lovers. They're not allowed. But that makes it kind of more romantic because you sneak. But that's what Anakin did. That's what Anakin did. I would love to read a fan fiction of... Padme saying yes to Anakin and then I'm, ruling the galaxy together. I'm sure that is out there with all of its spicy steaminess. Mm, I'm sure it's out true there. True steaminess because on that planet they probably got together on one of those lava rocks mm. before he got burned. Not after. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is this is pre burnt up to a crisp Anakin. Right, because post would make things difficult. I don't know if all Um, of his limbs and appendages are completely cut off. Everything's probably cut off. Um, Because did you see how far the fire went up? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, his whole body. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. His whole body. He became bald. (laughs) Everywhere. His his baldness never recovered. He became bald forever. He could be buzz cutting it every day. You know no, he was bald forever. <laughs> Even to the end. To the very every end. man's nightmare. He <laughs> literally, the nerves were burnt to a crisp and he, the hair never grew back. Okay, can we end the podcast? <laughs> like, what is going also, on? Also, Anakin in the third episode with long curly hair. Yeah. Sexy man. But All also right. just as Anakin though, because H- Hayden, whatever his name is, meh. Listen. But him as Anakin. Like, right, Anakin. Right. I agree. I totally agree. And Star Wars was not a toxic set. But the behind Aww. the scenes are so fun. So funny. Yes. You guys should watch it if you haven't seen behind the scenes. Samuel Jackson. He's amazing. And all of the behind the scenes, so funny. He asked for a purple lightsaber, eh? Yeah, and he's the only one. Yeah. He's the only one with purple yeah. lightsaber. Anyways, I hope you so guys cool. enjoyed today's video. The tangents are always here. They're never going to go anywhere. <laughs> By the way, we didn't mention, but we, we do have a Patreon video. I should have talked about this before, but oh my God. we have each been on movie sets and we have different experiences that we're going to share in an exclusive Patreon video. So if you want to see it, we're going to link it down below. Thank you once again to all of our patrons for supporting us. And we hope you have a good rest of your day and we'll see you in the next podcast. Remember, Bye. white rabbit. White rabbit. Bye. Bye.